Hey, welcome back everyone. In today's episode, we are going to be installing the spring plate and torsion bars, and hopefully giving the car a lower stance of about three inches. So let's get right into it. Here's a list of things you'll need for today. Some all-purpose grease. Uh, this grease will just go on the end of each torsion bar. You'll need a bushing, an inner and an outer bushing. And since mine are urethane, I'll put some grease on those to keep them from squeaking. You'll need a spring plate cap and the four bolts that will hold that in place. You also need the torsion bar itself, as seen. And now would be a good time to mention that these torsion bars are directional. You can see here they're labeled R for right and L for left, or R for passenger side and L for driver side. We also need the spring plate and the accompanying three bolts that will hold it to the diagonal arm. You'll want to grab a angle indicator like this. I got that for $4 at Harbor Freight. That should be accurate enough for what we need. And a chart of angles that will determine how high or low your car sits from its stock position. Uh, torque wrench and an extension will come in handy as well as your sockets and you'll also want a rubber mallet so let's get into it but before we get too far into it let's talk about a few things that you might need to do if your car is still assembled first thing your rear fender is going to get in the way from the spring plate so you need to either remove it entirely or remove the bolts maybe the bottom two or three bolts so that it can bend outward and you can pull this spring plate off the torsion bar when the time comes. Next, if your car is running and driving straight and you wanna keep it aligned, you need to make sure you mark with a chisel or a file or a marker or whatever here on the diagonal arm and the spring plate so that when you put it back together, you can line it up in the exact same spot. Third, I don't have the bump stop installed on the car and if you're going to be replacing yours, it would be a good time to take it off, do this job, and then put it back on as it will limit the range of motion of the diagonal arm and make it a little bit more difficult to reinstall the spring plate. Uh, lastly, I don't have the torsion bar installed currently, and so I can move my diagonal arm up and down freely, but if yours was installed, you would need a jack to lift it up and keep it suspended. Okay, enough of that. So, first thing you want to do is remove one of the bolts from your shock. I removed the upper bolt, but if your shell was on, the lower bolt would work just the same and probably be easier to access. What we want to do is just take away the pressure from that shock as we need to move the diagonal arm up and down. Once we're at this point, we're going to remove the three bolts that hold the diagonal arm to the spring plate, just like that, super easy. And here's where you're gonna to wanna to use the jack because we need to lift that diagonal arm up as far as it can go. And now with your jack in place, holding your diagonal arm up, you want to loosen these four bolts, keep them in, don't take them all the way out, but they want to be loose enough that you can slide that spring plate outward and off of this ledge that it rests on. Now they make tools that will help you do this, uh, but if you don't have the tools or want to buy them, uh, hitting the plate from behind with a hammer a few times should move it away and off of that shelf that it rests on and allow it to spring violently downward into this position here. And I want to just reiterate now that you do not want to have your hands or use your hands to pull that plate out from the shelf. You want to use a hammer and you want to stay clear because when it comes down, it comes down fast and you could be injured from it. Okay, so before we go any further, we want to set ourselves up to make sure that the car is completely level. So grab your angle finder and if you can, set that right on top of the transmission tunnel on a flat spot and use jacks and jack stands to try and set the car completely level. This will help us as we go through this process to make math easy 
and make sure that the angles we set our spring plates to match the chart and where we want our car to be ultimately in the end. So you can see here, I've got the dial indicator on the center tunnel and we are at zero degrees, just where we wanna be. All right, back to the back end of the car. We wanna take that same angle finder and just set it right on top of the spring plate so that it is on that flat part right there. And we're gonna read the angle should be 21 degrees and 20 minutes. You can see we're right there and that's gonna be the stock ride height of all of these Beetle cars. And now that we've established we're set at the stock ride height, we can remove the four bolts that hold the spring plate cap in place and remove the cap, the spring plate itself, and if I had a torsion bar there, I'd remove the torsion bar. Then we know when we put it back together, we know exactly where we need to be to be back at our stock ride height. All right, now that we've got it all apart, let's put it back together. Grab your torsion bar, make sure you have the bar for the correct side of the car you're working on. In this case, we're doing the passenger side or right side. So we'll grab the bar with the R on it and your grease, and you want to just grease up both ends of the bar where those splines are. And once you've got that nice and lubed up, you can slip the torsion bar back in to its housing, and we're gonna work on setting up the spring plate back to its original ride height and deal with adjusting the spring plate before we put in the bushings. So go ahead and grab your angle finder again and verify that we're back at the 21 and a half degrees of stock ride height. And then we're gonna use this chart to determine how many clicks or notches we need to move the inner bar and the outer bar to determine our ride height. In my case, I want to lower the car three inches so using this chart, we can see that I need to raise the inner spline four notches and then lower the outer spline three notches. And that should give me a difference of 11 degrees and 30 minutes or just a little over 11 degrees. So let's try and set ourselves up for success. If we know that our stock ride height was 21 degrees and 20 minutes, and we do these rotations and we change that 11 degrees and 30 minutes, our end spring plate angle should be right at about 10 degrees. All right, so let's give it a go. So remember, we're first going to move the spring plate up four notches. And to do that, we're gonna do that on the inner splines. Then we're gonna go down three notches on the outer spline. The best way to do that is to just grab that torsion bar while the whole thing is assembled and give it a little shake to get it free and slowly twist one, two, three, and four up and then press that into place. And once the inner spline is set, gently pull on that spring plate to release it from the outer splines and go down one, two, and three. And go ahead and press that into place. Now we can check to see if we got the right angle with our angle finder. Put it on the bar now. And if you recall, we should be somewhere around 10 degrees. And wouldn't you know it? We're right there at 10 degrees. So now that we have the spring plate angle where we want it, we can begin to start the preparation to install the bushing. So just make sure that the inner splines of the torsion bar are set firmly into place. Maybe take a rubber mallet and gently tap it like this and grab your bushing. Note that the bushing is directional. It is conical in shape. The tapered side goes in towards the center of the car. The wider side goes towards the outer of the car. The two closer teeth go towards the front of the car and the two wider teeth go towards the back of the car. You really can't mess this up. There's only one way it can go in. So just grease that up good so that you don't get squeaking once the spring plate is back in place and slip it in its spot. 
Now once that inner bushing is snugly nestled into its spot, we can install the spring plate. Slip it over the torsion bar and take your best guess to see if you're still at the 10 degree mark. In my case I was, first try. So go ahead and press that into place, give it a couple good whacks with the mallet to make sure it's firmly set, and we can proceed to install the outer bushing. Again, this one is directional, but it is round, so the wider portion of the bushing will go towards the inner portion of the car, and the smaller portion of the bushing will go towards the outside. Again, this can only go on one way, really. The spring plate cap will uh, not let you put it on in the wrong direction. So go ahead and grease all that up as well and slide it on just like that. Get your spring plate cap. Shine your shoes, Governor. Get your spring plate cap. And give it a little bit of grease because why not? Once it's greased up, slip it into place. And we're going to thread loosely on two or three of these bolts. Now, if you're doing this with the car fully assembled, this plate is going to be hard to reach and the threads of these short bolts are going to be hard to press through and get to grab onto the frame there. So if you need to, you can temporarily set in a longer bolt so that that plate cap stays in place and the spring plate doesn't pop back out while you're trying to muscle it back underneath the diagonal arm. And now's a good time to put that jack back underneath the diagonal arm uh, if you moved it and we need to pry the spring plate onto the other side of that plate on the diagonal arm. And I'm going to be honest, there's no real pretty way to do this. Um, like I said, there might be a tool somebody makes, but a big screwdriver or a crowbar or something strong and flat that you can use to just pry and bend it just like this. Uh, you might take a few shots at it like I did here, but with some persistence, you will get it. And keep in mind, doing it this way, you're guaranteed to really scratch up that nice new paint job we just put on all these parts. But in the end, you'll get it. And I think this is the one. Right there, there we go. So now that that spring plate is on the back side of the diagonal arm, uh, the two tabs that are on the spring plate might interfere slightly with the diagonal arm, so just give it a wiggle and a press, and it should let itself back down into its original position. Okay, I think now's a good time to address the fact that depending on how high or low you have made your car will determine how much that spring plate needs to get pressed underneath the diagonal arm and how much it needs to get lifted back up onto this shelf. So because we lowered the car in my case, that means the, the starting position of the plate is now higher and I was able to just slide the plate right on top of that shelf without any effort. But if you are going to raise the car, which means you're, you're moving the spring plate to a lower starting position, you may have to use a jack to actually jack up the spring plate so that it clears the shelf and you can tap it back onto its place there in the shelf. And once we're there, it's all downhill from here. So what you want to do is just finish up putting in those four bolts for the spring plate cap. We're going to set those in and tighten them down and we'll torque all the bolts at the end. After we set those in and tighten them up, we're going to reinstall the shock bolt and follow that up with the three bolts that attach the spring plate to the diagonal arm. Now these bolts are a little bit tight on the back side there, so I like to send them through and have the nut on the outside and the bolt head on the inside. That makes it a little bit easier when tightening them down. Also, you can see that I've got the long extension on the ratchet that helps keep things out away from the brake drum and makes it a little bit easier to tighten those up as well. So remember when we made the marks before we took these off in the beginning, you wanna make sure that you line your mark back up 
and then tighten down these bolts so that your car stays in alignment. So now the last step is to just torque down all of the bolts. These four spring plate cap bolts will get torqued to 25 foot-pounds. The shock bolt will be torqued to 43 foot-pounds. And the three bolts that connect the diagonal arm to the spring plate will be torqued to 80 foot-pounds. Once you've got those three bolts torqued down, if you're going to or need to, reinstall your bump stop. Put the wheels back on the car, go drive it, and go scrape and ruin a few exhausts. Enjoy it. Thanks for watching, and until next time.